Thank you all for watching this presentation on the Atlantic Menhaden Draft Addendum 1. My name is James Boyle, and I am the Fishery Management Plan Coordinator for Atlantic Menhaden here at the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission. Draft Addendum 1 contains options that consider changes to the commercial allocations, the episodic event set-aside program, and the incidental catch and small scales fisheries provision. Right off the top, I'm going to recognize that the document can be pretty complicated with lots of options with sub-options. So in my presentation, I will try to simplify it as best I can. But if you find that you have questions afterwards, please feel free to reach out. My contact information will be displayed at the end of the presentation. Here's an outline of what we were going to cover during this presentation. I'm going to start off with a quick overview of the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission and the timeline for the development of this addendum. And then I'll go into each of the three subsections in this addendum separately with their objectives and proposed management options. And finally, I'll provide all the information on how to submit a public comment as well as how to find more information on the addendum and the public hearing process. For some background, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission was formed in 1942 by an interstate compact between the 15 states of the Atlantic coast. Every state and jurisdiction from Maine to Florida participate in the management of Atlantic Menhaden. The Atlantic Coastal Fisheries Cooperative Management Act charges the commission to create fishery management plans to provide for the conservation of coastal fishery resources and gives the commission regulatory authority in state waters. The management process works through quarterly meetings of the Atlantic Menhaden Board, where each state is represented by three commissioners and each state gets one vote in the decision making process. Here's a quick recap of the process for the development of this addendum. The board initiated the development of draft addendum one in August of 2021. The document was developed from August 21 until July of 2022, where the board reviewing the draft at both the January and May meetings to provide further comments and edits before it was approved for public comment in this past August. The public comment period is ongoing through September 30th and will include 10 hearings in total, including in-person, virtual, and hybrid hearings. All public comments must be submitted by 11.59 p.m. on September 30th, and the board is expected to consider those comments and take final action on the addendum in November of 2022. This slide shows all of the major options in the document. The point of this document is to address quotas, and quota can come from three different sources. It can come from the allocation, from the Episodic Event Set-Aside Program, or EESA, and from this bycatch provision called the incidental catch and small scales fisheries provision. So I'm gonna first start off with the allocation before moving into the EESA and the bycatch programs individually. So now let's get into each section. The first issue topic is allocation. The objective of the options in this section are to align with the recent availability of the resource, enable states to maintain current directed fisheries with minimal interruptions during the season, reduce the need for quota transfers, and finally, to fully use the annual tack or total allowable catch without overage. So we're talking about changing the quotas primarily because we're seeing a large increase in landings in New England and it's taking a greater number of quota transfers for states in the Northeast to continue their fisheries. So this section uses the same two-step approach as we currently use, which is first to consider the minimum that each state gets, and then second, allocate whatever is left based on how much states catch over a certain time period. So starting with step one, which is the minimum, currently we have every state get 0.5%, and we can continue that by choosing option A, the status quo. However, for option B, the board is considering using a tiered approach to reduce the need for quota transfers and is more aligned with how states use their quota. In that option, there are three tiers where states who normally do not catch much Manhattan would get a lower minimum in tier one or two, and the states that catch the most would stay at 0.5% in tier three. Then that takes us to step two, which just to note, because of the pandemic, the board removed 2020 from any of the options because that year was abnormal and affected fisheries in different states differently. So there will be no use of 2020 in these options. But after the minimums are doled out, then we use an average of landings over a certain time period to assign the rest of the coastwide tax. Option one uses historical landings from 2009 to 2011, which is what we do now. Option two uses recent landings from 2018, 2019, and 2021. And option three mixes the two. Now the sub options in option three give different choices for how to weight the mix. So in sub option one, you can have a greater weighting towards recent landings with 75, 25 split favoring landings from 2018, 19, and 21. And in sub option two, it's an even split 50-50 between historical and recent landings. Finally, we have option four, which is a moving average. 
So this option would allow the allocation to adjust over time by updating the time period every year to be whatever is the most recent three years, instead of choosing three years and staying with those three years over time. Now, the difference between the 4A and 4B is how that average is calculated only slightly. In 4B, the average is calculated only with landings under or equal to the tax. So if we go over the tax, those extra landings do not count towards the average. In option A, it uses all landings for every state. The next few slides show the different combinations of step one and step two, and these tables are in the document as well if you'd like to see them in more detail. So this first table shows what the state allocations would be if we used option A in step one, which is a 0.5% minimum to every state, and the different time frames in options one through three and the sub options of step two. Next, we have the combination of option A and step one, the same minimum, but with the first moving average option for A in step two. Then we have the exact same, but with the second moving average option for B in step two. Then the next three tables are the exact same as before, except with option B in, the, in step one, which is the three tiered minimum with all the same options of step two. So here's Step two, one through three with that three tiered minimum. Step two, four A with a three tiered minimum. And step two, four B with a three tiered minimum. Moving on to the episodic event set aside pro program, the objectives of this option are to ensure sufficient access to episodic changes in regional availability in order to minimize in season disruptions and reduce the need for quota transfers and incidental catch or small scale fisheries landings. Very briefly, for those that may not already be aware, the EESA is a program just for the Northeast states where 1% of the coastwide TAC is set aside every year. And if any Northeast state finishes their allocation and has an unusually large amount of menhaden in their waters, then they can apply to fish for them under certain conditions. And the question we are looking to address is, should we change the amount of the set aside? So option one is to keep it at 1%. And option two would be to change it to somewhere between one and 5%. Now the sub options are for if the board chooses to change the value, then how do they make that choice? Sub option one would be for them to set the value between one and 5% when they decide on final action for this document in November. And sub option two would be for the board to set the value during the specifications process, which occurs at one or more year intervals that the board sets. And then lastly, we have the incidental catch or small scales fisheries provision which I'm going to call the bycatch provision, um, the objective of which is to sufficiently constrain landings to achieve overall management goals of meeting the needs of existing fisheries, reducing discards, and indicating when those landings can occur and if those landings are part of the directed fishery. So here's an outline of this section, which has four components that I'm going to discuss in more detail. But the general question we are trying to answer is how limited should the board make access to the bycatch quota? The first topic is, when can states enter into the bycatch program? Second, what gears are allowed to fish in the program? Third, what are the trip limits for those gears? And finally, should this catch count towards the coastwide tax? So in that first section, we're talking about when is a state allowed to start fishing in this program? Right now, the management plan says a state can enter into the program when the quota allocation is met. But states have been interpreting that phrasing differently where some states enter the bycatch provision when they use when their whole state quota is used, and a few have split their quota between fishing sectors. And so when that sector reaches its limit, then that sector alone starts going into the bycatch program. So option one would make no change. Option two would clarify that the ability for states to choose their method. And option three would unify it so that every state had to wait until they use the entire state quota before they start into the bycatch program. In this section, we are discussing the gear that are allowed to catch in this bycatch provision. The board is considering limiting those gear types. The first option is the status quo and would keep all of the same gears, the full list of which can be found in the document. The second option only eliminates purse sames. And the third option is further limiting and takes away the following gear types, cast nets, traps, excluding floating fish traps, pots, haul sames, hook and line, bag nets, hoop nets, hand lines, trammel nets, bait nets, and purse seines, which are smaller than 150 fathoms long and eight fathoms deep. 
a full list of which is also going to appear on the next slide. So here in section three, we're talking about limiting how much fish can be landed under the bycatch provision for directed fisheries only. See the bottom of the slide for what is considered a directed gear, and it's all the same as I listed it previously. Now currently, they can catch 6,000 pounds per trip per day. Then we have option two to bring it down to 4,500 pounds, and option three would bring that down to 3,000 pounds. Non-directed gears would still be able to catch 6,000 pounds. So it is only the gears listed on this slide that would be affected by these changes. This last provision is talking about whether or not this bycatch quota should count as part of the total coastwide quota. Currently, it does not, and option one would maintain that system. Now, option two would make it count towards the coastwide tax. But if the quota is to count against the tack, then the board needs the ability to adapt if the landings start going over that tack. So the first option under two, which is option 2A, is for the board to limit the trip limits. And the second, 2B, is for the board to limit gear types. And if you think they should be able to do both, please let me know in your comment as they can combine the two. So that wraps up my overview of the addendum. You can submit written comments via mail, email, or fax to the addresses listed here. And just another reminder that the deadline for public comments is 11.59 p.m. on September 30th. Comments received after this time will not be considered by the board. When you're giving your comment, first be sure to state your name, state, and affiliation if you are representing an organization. And in your comments, be sure to address which options you support or which you oppose, which overall options, which sub-options, and why you choose to support or oppose those options. And finally, please give any other additional information that you would like to be considered by the board. If you need more information on the draft addendum or other public hearings, you can find it online at the address listed here. The commission has scheduled 10 public hearings to gather input on draft addendum one. If you would like to provide comments, you may attend any of the following hearings. For more information on attending a public hearing, please visit asmfc.org slash calendar, or feel free to contact me, James Boyle, at jboyle at asmfc.org. Thank you very much, and we look forward to receiving your comments.